this time we got Mr. Echidnut's video on the world after Subaru dies. And this is the episode where, you know, Echidna reveals how much of a witch she really is. Not that she never tried to really hide it, per se. She's just trying to sway Subaru into her favor to create that contract. But I wonder what Mr. Echidnut's going to say to justify her witch behavior. Happy ReZero Day, everyone. I know a lot of people are confused, so to clear it up, next week's episode is going to conclude the first core of ReZero Season 2, and the second mm. half will begin airing in January. This week's oh, no. episode started off with Subaru recovering from one of the most traumatic loops in the entire series, so it's only natural for him to seek another therapeutic conversation with the Witch of Greed. He enters the tomb hoping for a tea party, but ends but a up trial. facing the second trial first. The second trial forces you to face the unthinkable present, but because Subaru's had so many different lives, he has to take the trial again and again for each of his loops, making the second trial a lot more difficult for Subaru than it would have been for someone else. It's Oh! Hold up, one more time, one more time. He has to take the trial again and again for each of his loops, making... So Amelia, obviously, right, 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 right. How, uh, unthinkable present. But this is the shit that we see after we die. What would Amelia see? I don't know. Would she see the timeline where she freezes herself and everyone and, and to see what happens afterwards? Because, like, we're only seeing the shit that after Super died. And because he's obviously looping, we get to see all of that. But, okay the second trial a lot more difficult for Subaru than it would have been for someone else. It's implied that Subaru's ability simply rewinds the timeline of the same world he died in. However, this episode delves into the territory of parallel worlds. What a if? lot of ReZero fans have contemplated this very concept, so it's awesome that it's finally being addressed in the anime. Notice how Subaru says he's almost dead instead of I'm almost dead. This mm. proves that Subaru is very disconnected from his previous lives. He discarded them and moved on without considering how his death could have affected those around him. Because the more you focus on that, the more your mental is going to just be broken, right? You want to subconsciously just hide that shit and move on. The web novel version of this first scene was so different from the light novel that I think it's definitely worth mentioning. In the web novel, Subaru's dead body rises from the ground like a mechanical doll with its head twisted to the side. What? He attacks everyone with the witch's shadows and then Puck shows up to fight him. It was what the hell? We would love to see that shit. Witch's shadow? He attacks with the witch's shadow? Bro. When is my man going to be able to do that in real time? It's a really intense moment, but ultimately they decided to cut it from the light novel, but I just thought I'd no. share it with you guys anyway. Now, one of my favorite moments in all of Arc 4 is the Puck versus Reinhardt scene. Mm. This takes place in episode 15 of season 1 when Puck tries to end the world after Amelia dies. It's kind of hard to see, but the sword in Reinhardt's Ryuken. hand is the dragon sword Reed. This is the first time we've seen him use this weapon in- It's got a name? It's, it's name is Reed? Is the Dragon Sword Reed. Okay. This is the first time we've seen him use this weapon in the anime, which means that Puck was deemed a worthy opponent. That's right, because this sword is not just a taunt. When we said to Elsa, we cannot, I cannot draw the sword, it means like the sword has not deemed Elsa to be important. The sword has deemed Puck to be important. It has been drawn. But despite that, one strike from the sword was more than enough to make Puck completely disintegrate. I'd like to read you what it says in the web novel for a second. Okay. Cleaving through the air, piercing the atmosphere, and shattering the earth, the maelstrom of upswept mana severed everything along the line of the swung out blade. Jesus. The world that was covered in white was born anew. From the shattered earth, flowers budded and bloomed. Yeah, again, it's not just like destroying. It's literally giving rebirth to this world after it destroyed. Warmth returned to the air and sunlight peered through the severed sky. Damn. The Sword Saint's attack simultaneously brought about the world's end as well as its rebirth. <laughs> the beginning of the end. The end of the beginning. So that was the first time we really got a solid grasp of Reinhardt's true power. And this mm -hmm. was one of my favorite moments because I find Reinhardt to be a very interesting character. Oh, who doesn't, right? Reinhardt is the most fascinating character because of how OP he is and all these different blessings and divine protections he has. But we only see him in episode 3. Not only, right? But he pops off there. And then I'm like, oh man, I can't wait to see Reinhardt for the rest of the season. Benched. It's gone, Curtis calls. Because conveniently, we can't just have these OP people bailing Subaru out every time, right? So for the story narration purposes, Reinhardt is gone. Season 2, his ass is not showing up. Season 3, 
motherfucker better just clutch the arc 5 with this dragon sword. If he doesn't, if he is AFK again, I'm gonna be so upset. But anyway, remember the first trial is to face your past. The second trial is to face the unthinkable present. So mm. obviously the... The future. The third trial is going to involve the... What? <laughs> what is this art? <laughs> what is this art? <laughs> Rem is so happy with that too, bro. <laughs> future in some way. So let's think about what that means. If okay. we get a glimpse into the future of ReZero, it mm. may answer many of the questions you guys have been asking. Yeah, is Satala an N Amelia? The English is pretty butchered there, but it is Satala Amelia. Is Satala supposed to be future Amelia? How did this all work out? I don't know, man. Or more realistically, it'll probably answer nothing and we'll just end up with even more questions than we had yep. to begin with, but I digress. Most likely. Subaru did not pass this trial. He never reached a conclusion and even started going a bit crazy after what it showed him. But when he wakes up, he finds the person he wanted to see more than anyone. That's right, not Amelia. He wanted to see Rem. The one he cherishes the most here is Rem. He's so traumatized at this point, it... Man, what if it was Patrash though? That would've been hilarious. If Patrash showed up, oh my god. It takes him a while to even question how and why Rem is appearing in front of him. She leans in and tries to kiss him, but Subaru cock blocks himself, and it turns out that Rem was actually the imposter. Mm-hmm. Because of her authority of lust, anyone that looks at Carmilla will instead see whatever they truly desire in their heart. So, oh, Otto's hat's dropping down, I think. Kid that really, really loves Otto. It's great, but surprising that it's not Amelia, that it's Rem. But Rem is two in his heart. But Rem was emotional support in episode, in season one. So I guess the past experiences with Rem building him up is the reason Rem is prioritized in front of Amelia, even though he loves Amelia more. Carmilla's authority captivates people, making them so absorbed in watching her that they forget to breathe. Yep. In fact, you wouldn't even notice if someone stabbed you or if you were on fire. And because of that, when Carmilla was alive, very few people met her and lived to tell about it. That's kind of sad. She can never have experienced love. She represents lust. Everyone sees her and sees whatever they want to see, but the more closer they get, they literally cannot even breathe. They're just so captivated. Carmilla can never experience love, while everyone lusts for her. That's pretty ironic, huh? Met her and lived to tell about it. But it's revealed that Dona sent Carmilla there to bring Subaru back to reality. He was failing the second trial, and if that continued, he'd end up like Emilia from the previous episode. Ah! Excuse me, sorry, sorry? From the previous episode the second trial and if that continued he'd end up like Emilia from the previous yeah if the soul shatters right this is the mind break moment so man Subaru that, that would be an interesting run huh a soul broken Subaru who is now just out here just doing crazy shit and potentially even overcoming these challenges and having a checkpoint made like that is definitely a, a fun like fan fiction that I could get on board with. There is there no what if route for fucking mind broken Subaru? This episode. Anyway, Dona presents an offer to Subaru. Contract. Oh, she yapping. She yapping. She wants to form a contract with him so she can experience return by death from his eyes. It doesn't seem like a bad idea at first, and just mm -hmm. when Subaru's about to accept the contract, Minerva. the conversation is interrupted when it starts raining Sundarays. Remember, Minerva's the type of person that despises injustice, conflict, and deception. She gets furious when bad things happen to people and vows to use her authority of wrath to heal the world with her fists. Jojo memes, part four. So when she catches Dona trying to manipulate Subaru, she gets very upset, and the other witches pretty much feel the same way, more or less. We are finally introduced to Sekhmet, the Witch of Sloth, who might just be the most relatable character in ReZero other than Hector. Sekhmet Why? appears to be exhausted all the time, to the point that even standing up is too much work for her. She yeah, and her entire thing is just sighing. 
over and over. Everything she says, she's just so tired. She's like, huh, I don't know. But she's also apparently so fucking strong. She can beat all the witches right now. She truly is the physical embodiment of sloth. And I certainly understand exactly how she feels, especially. What is this symbol? Have we ever seen this symbol before? I don't know, but interesting hairpiece ornaments. Maybe I should be focused on that later on. And I certainly understand exactly how she feels, especially considering how long it's taking me to finish part four of the Sloth If. But anyway, the strange part about this encounter is that all these witches are extremely dangerous beings that threatened the world 400 years ago, yet they seem to be showing compassion. How does Minerva threaten the world? Well, I'm assuming that everything she does just heals shit, but that's not really the case. Well, there's environmental damage that Minerva just did by landing here. But maybe she can't do- me, me, Is there like a toggle off and on of when it heals and when it doesn't? Who knows? ...for Subaru by alerting him of Dona's deception and warning him not to accept her contract. But despite their warnings, Dona begins her legendary confession slash proposal that she took yappin. about 6,000 characters in the web novel. Jesus. I gotta admit, as a Dona stan, I'm kinda disappointed that she didn't get an entire episode like Rem did in season- Imagine. Yeah, that this the episode 18 was literally like like five to six minutes each Subaru and Rem just fucking popping off with the Yap session, but imagine an entire episode where Ekidona is just <laughs> just just yapping. Season one, I feel like they could have easily given her at least 10 minutes for the speech, but I guess they really wanted to end with that Satella cliffhanger. I don't personally agree with that choice, but I do understand why they did it. Basically, Dona explains that Return by Death is the ultimate ability for someone in pursuit of infinite knowledge because mm -hmm. with infinite lives, you can do anything and everything. With Return by Death at her disposal, Dona will finally be able to satisfy her greed, and that's why she wants to experience it from Subaru's eyes after four months. Yep, and she's been so bored for 400 years. And this dude shows up with the ability to return by death. At that point, she probably already had made it in her mind that, okay, okay, this is my ticket for entertainment. I've been so bored, I have no outside knowledge, I've been sealed in here for the longest time. So, you Subaru, we get a contract, I see everything through your eyes, and we're gonna test out every possibility, taking every detour. ...forming a contract with him. She'll offer him her knowledge to help him reach his goals, but in exchange, she's gonna manipulate him into satisfying her own curiosity in the process. She's offering to let Subaru use her however he wishes, but she's also gonna use him at mm -hmm. the same time. Now, personally, I would have accepted the contract before she even explained what it was. Of course you would. It looks would. like Subaru had other plans. He does point out an interesting detail, though. He accuses Dona of being unable to understand people's emotions and basically calls her personality fake. If you Is it that she doesn't understand? Or that she does, but she thinks it's trivial and her pursuit is more important. You thought it was a bit odd how she kind of acted like Aqua in episode 3? Yeah. That should make a lot more sense now. She was acting. All her movements... Everything before. These cute little scenes were never genuine. We have been fooled. It was all fake. And this is the real Echidna. She has no emotions like this. She just wants one thing. Content. ...sense now. She was acting. All her movements and expressions are exaggerated because she's trying to mimic the emotions of a normal person. And like, even her quote-unquote being raised by Subaru, even him saying, like, there are some times where he wouldn't mention directly how he was so appreciative and, and how he felt nice that like, she knows about Return by Death. Like, there's some we can share the secret, but he wouldn't mention and, you know, and she'd start blushing and sometimes she'd like prepare like a new tray of biscuits and shit and tea and shit but at the end of the day like all of that stuff right all of, so i was right to doubt her from the beginning like everyone said they were fucking crying their eyes out they're like oh what a heartfelt moment a kid is here for therapy at that moment i was not baited through the fucking brightness at that moment i was like well isn't this just serving her fucking benefit of getting more content out of him like, maybe both can be true, but I've had my guard up the entire time because this witch seemingly was not really a witch until now because she's been acting. She's just been faking it. 
the real Dona is unable to understand normal people, meaning that her entire attitude and her behavior up until this point has all been calculated as part of her act. Yeah. Subaru also learns that Beatrice has been waiting for no one. That person doesn't yep. exist. Her contract's only purpose is the Witch of Greed's amusement. And upon realizing that, Subaru decides up. that he wants to form a contract with Beatrice instead of the Witch. Based and... Thanks to Echidna, now Subaru has made up his mind. Before, he wasn't really sure. But even if you're going to make a contract, isn't the thing about Biko having to be number one, like, that has to come true? I'm not exactly sure how that's going to happen since Amelia is supposed to be number one. Can we share number one? Is Rem going to get pushed down? I don't know. But then another witch appears. Satala. In fact, the witch appears. And, we're and like, how is she appearing at this moment in the dream castle? Like, this girl just shows up whenever she wants. It's so confusing. It's like, what happened to the seal? Does the seal even exist? Is it weakened? How are you then in here? I, how can you transcend the outside world into the dream world? I don't fucking know. We're left with another weekly re-zero cliffhanger. So what can we expect to see in the future? Well, judging by the reaction of the other witches, Dona appears to be the most upset about yep. Satella showing up. very happy. It seems as though the two of them are competing for Subaru, even though he's kind of rejected both of them at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Echidna definitely wants Subaru a lot because of his useful power. It's interesting, though, because the useful power stems from the authority of Envy, which is... Something Subaru, that's still something I'm not completely sure. We know Return by Death is Authority of Envy, but does he have the Witch Factor of Envy within him? Or is it simply being borrowed, somehow proxy using it through Satala? I don't know. Point. But next episode will definitely reveal a lot because we're going to have all seven More lore. witches together in one location with Subaru right in the middle of everything. Yeah, because he's the uniter, Subaru Pleiades. I could not be more hyped, guys. The importance of this episode is firstly the fact that Subaru failed the second trial and his sanity was put in danger in the process of taking Okay, so he did fail the trial. I, I thought that for some reason he passed it because, I don't know, he went through all those different experiences and then Echidna gave him a little mental support, but he failed it, got it. The second trial is uniquely difficult for Subaru, so it could potentially be impossible for him to pass, meaning mm. that Emilia might be our only hope for free. <laughs> Amelia does not inspire confidence in me. I don't know what's going to have to change for her to figure this shit out. But again, it's just like an individual thing that she needs to overcome herself. And there's nothing we can really do other than just be her emotional support. Freeing the sanctuary at this point. Subaru also officially established his intentions to form a contract with Beatrice. So that's if right. that's successful, then Subaru's going to have a much easier time dealing with all the other problems he's currently facing. Mm -hmm. Imagine, like, Biako just full power, just... See how easy V could dealt with Elsa, man? I know that we got backstabbed, but now we know exactly kind of how that shit works, so... With Biku on our side, it's gonna be such a formidable ally. Satella, however, is a wild card at the moment. We don't know what she wants, we don't know why she's showing up, but we do know one thing, she's... She loves Subaru. Everything has to do with love and want to monopolize his love and she's probably yeah, she's probably upset that Subaru is here with the other witches. Pissed. I thought this episode was amazing as usual. Ten out of ten. I'm definitely giving it a ten out of ten just <laughs> Is there any episode where it's not a ten out of ten? Yes, there's like a fourteen out of ten. Because it's re zero, but I did have some complaints about the pacing and animation this time. I thought the first half of the episode was really good. The entirety of the second trial was very well done. In terms of the light novel adaptation, they didn't really cut much of anything. Thing besides a bit of dialogue and they even added a couple scenes that weren't in the light novel so i was super happy to see that however towards the end of the episode there were a couple frames that i felt were inconsistent in quality specifically dona's evil smile at the end of her speech didn't really hmm. look right but again they are animating this from home so i'm just gonna give them a pass and hope that it looks better in the direct does it look weird i mean the eye, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the light novel versus the anime, but like, plenty of anime versus light novel art is completely different. But, it, does it look weird? I don't know, I thought, I thought it captivated a very 
creepy witch-like presence. Give them a pass and hope that it looks better in the director's cut. I also thought the speech was very rushed compared to the source material, but then again, if I watched this episode as an anime only, I probably would have thought it was perfect. This wasn't the best episode of the season, but it was still much better than really any other anime I've seen this entire year, and other than a couple complaints I had, it was still a great episode. All right. Overall, loved the episode, loved the music as always, loved the new VAs for Sekhmet and Carmilla. I couldn't be more excited for next week's episode, and I hope everyone else has been enjoying this first core as much as yes, I Yes, sir. If you guys enjoyed the video, though, give it a like. To I guess the first core of ReZero Season 2 is ending as we go into the new year of 2021 to get more content. But hey, please go give Mr. Echidna's video a like. Check out his channel if you haven't. Here's the link. And I'll see you next time.